All right, here he is. They feel now that they were successful on January 6th. Uh, and that anything done to them, anything done to Trump, anything done to Steve Bannon and all of these guys from the January 6th Commission under the Justice Department are illegal acts of an illegal government. They view the legitimacy of the United States government is only when it is legitimately in their hands. I had predicted beforehand, I said only one of two things is going to come of, of all these armed people that started marching, counter-marching in the George Floyd protests with rifles. They are going to become either one, if Trump wins, they will become the armed enforcers of his will on the street. Uh, remember all those Trump rally parades that were, you know, we used to say they were like ISIS flag parades. If Trump had won, imagine that on the street, only them coming, calling, you know, carrying guns and essentially saying our word is law now, you know, unarmed, uh, unofficial paramilitaries with Trump's blessing. And I said, on the other hand, if Trump loses, these people are going to go underground, they're going to get their weapons, they're going to start training, and they are going to be prepared to take over parts of the government and carry out a civil war or or. The lead up to a civil war is an insurgency, a long, large scale campaign, which is both political and paramilitary and terroristic in order to destabilize a legitimate government to set the conditions to overthrow that government. What do you see coming in the future then from what you see now? Well, right now, the, if the insurrection was the first step of the insurgency, the post insurrection political machinations of the Republican Party, the self radicalization, Donald Trump preparing for the second run for the presidency, that's the political wing of the insurgency. Mm -hmm. But these hillbillies that we all were, you know, making fun of, thinking, oh, well, they're going to get their, what are they going to do, get their guns, the U.S. Army is going to be there waiting for them. They're still preparing. They feel now that they were successful on January 6th. Uh, and that anything done to them, anything done to Trump, anything done to Steve Bannon and all of these guys from the January 6th Commission under the Justice Department are illegal acts of an illegal government. They view the legitimacy of the United States government is only when it is legitimately in their hands. Any other government is, you know, liberals and Negroes and Jews who sure. have taken over America and now they must organize. So after the insurrection, they tripled down on the buying guns. You know, AR-15 ammunition in George Floyd summer went from 39 cents a bullet to the current $1.25 a bullet. They're buying it and storing it and hoarding it in massive quantities. And you foresee another attack on the government? Hmm, I foresee a different way that government might be attacked. Um, to be a real insurgency, you need the, the popular will of the people around you to be successful, right? So you don't want to be a terrorist and go to a, or, or carry out an operation and go to a state where the little old ladies will shout for the cops and say, you're a terrorist, you're an insurgent, you're an insurrectionist. You want to, be, you want to do it in a place where you have a base of popular support. And this is a good piece of cent center America, right? The, 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 the Midwest and all these places. They're really red states with blue population centers that outnumber the red sections, right? So you'll see these blue dots, giant blue dots, in the middle of red swaths of terrain that, that's the counties, but the big cities with millions of people outnumber those people in the red areas. But imagine, if you will, that the governor of a state is a pro-Trump guy, that the state assembly is completely pro-Trump, that somebody who views some act that Washington does as illegitimate and the, you know, the rubes get in their cars and they start doing Trump parades, only they bring their guns out this time, and they seize an arsenal 
or they try to take over a military base, or they take over a National Guard base, or you know, a, a, an Air Force base, try to, and the U.S. government orders them to defend it, but the governor and the National Guard and the state sides with the insurrectionists. Now, where are we? That's rebellion. That is 1860 Civil War stuff, right? There. Well, we're already in a difficult position. Is the government really trying to bring people uh, to bear? Like, like, like we know the people who attacked, and a lot of people have been arrested. And but it's like the the pawns. Right. We haven't seen the real leaders of the insurrection face any uh, oh, right. issue. Is the government truly trying to change to, to, to bring these people to justice? Well, you know, I, I look at the two schools of thought on that. The Glenn Kirshner school of thought, you know, he's the, he was MSNBC legal analyst and prosecutor. And then you, you have other people who are, who are lawyers who watch the Justice Department and they say, this is the Justice Department not speaking. Because that investigation is so serious, maybe grand juries are in so it's still ongoing, yeah, potentially. But you don't know. Because unlike the Trump Justice Department or previous Justice Departments, they yeah. would announce investigations. This Justice Department, they could be pro you know, prosecuting Trump now. You wouldn't know. But Merrick Garland is well known as an institutionalist. He's the lawyer that will meet a Republican lawyer, and the first thing they do is have a talk about being lawyers, not ideological talks. Republican lawyers might talk to you about where did you clerk, where did you law firm, where did you go to school, and they're thinking, and we're going to eventually, you know, overtake this government and arrest you. So there's still, so so we should still perhaps have faith in this Justice Department that they're going to bring some of the leaders of this coup, Trump. To, to, to justice? Over I'm an evidence-based guy, and I see no evidence, so I do not feel that the Justice Department <laughs> right, right, right. The justice will department. do anything. I, don't, I, really think they, I really think that they believe as an institution, if they don't have an airlock case, right, on Donald Trump with him ordering a crime. I want you, like Nixon, when he ordered to them to go to the Brookings Institution, get in the safe, clear it all out. There's a recording of that. Right. Right? Right. I think that this Justice Department is a kumbaya Justice Department. Let's not do any... It's like those people who say, don't give Russia all those weapons, or Ukraine all those weapons, because Russia might, you know, do something. Like what? Invade Ukraine? Same thing here. Don't prosecute people because maybe this will destabilize the government. Right. This will destabilize the Trump vote. To do what? Attempt to overthrow the government again? This I mean, Justice Department deep. needs to say, we stand for the defense of America. Yeah. And that means anyone. But Merrick Garland's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite dangerous to have had an insurgency and be so unpunished. And unaccountable. Yeah. Right? Not even, the thing is, they're being brought to account. It's the punishment. And a lot of those punishments down of the Capitol protest or the Capitol insurrectionists are one, two months. But the Justice Department's calculation is, well, they will be marked with a criminal record and never be able to hold a firearm again, unless they're misdemeanors. And there's hundreds of misdemeanors being given out. A real Justice Department that would have been a zero tolerance Justice Department would have said, felonies for everybody. Are we, right? Is, is it right to say we're in the midst of a civil war? No, not yet. Not yet. We are in the midst of an insurgency. The insurgency, civil war has not gone hot. An insurgency can be cool. And right now we're in the political phase of that, where the Republicans are executing wild policies, fantastic lies, talking about revenge fantasies against every one of those who, who sided against Trump and Liz Cheney, and then what they're going to do when they come into power. Their insurgency is the motivation of their forces to overthrow to take this election, the November 22 election, and that's when they will wield power again, and they will wield it to destroy power. The, 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 the thing that, that I feel like out of the 2020 election and the big lie is that for them, it justifies anything they want to do in the future. Absolutely. Because they, they're like, you stole an election, so... 
Supreme Court, no what, elections. What, what, whatever we do is right. only equal to what you already did. Right, right, right. Yeah, and in their minds, you hear their rhetoric. You stole America. You've destroyed America. Yeah. We're taking back America. Yeah. You know, and you know, Thomas Ricks, uh, the military analyst, I'm paraphrasing him, said, there's an entire swath of white Americans of my age who no longer care that the United States, that um, no longer believe America should be America, except the America they want. And right. they're willing to get rid of it to get that. Yeah. You know, they want to read, you know, it's sort of like that Star Trek, the original series with Captain Kirk, where they go to this distant planet that a Starfleet sociologist goes to, and it's Nazi Germany. And they're like, why did you choose the Nazis? And they're like, they were highly organized. And they, you know, they had a, a, a social system. They made the Volkswagen Beetle and highways. And they're like, but they're Nazis. But these guys are hearkening themselves back to justifying any negative component of past American history. Look, these are the people that would start the Alien Exclusion Act and start shipping Chinese Americans off if they could. Or the Indian Acts, you know, the, the scalp. I, I'm waiting for them to propose the scalp acts again, act again, right? Where you could literally murder an Indian and bring his scalp in and get paid $100, which is what how the first century of the United States is how we got rid of the but we, Indians. But we should mm. be concerned about more violent attacks mm. from Trump people. Yes, you should be because they're already happening. These young men that are going out and carrying these mass murders and doing the, you know, Anders Bering Breivik, the, the Norwegian mass murderer who killed 69 children. Well, that guy did that because he said, and by the way, he was motivated, motivated by American white supremacist ideologues. His entire manifesto were Americans. Pam Geller and all these other characters who were like, kill Muslims, right? But that guy said... I murdered those children at that camp with great pride in his court hearing to wipe out the next generation of liberal pol politicians in Norway. So I decided to leave their parents alone and kill all their children. Okay, you know, we have these people going into elementary schools. We have people going into malls targeting specific ethnic religious groups. And they are universally white men, young white men, using AR-15s, and they all carry write the same copy of the Anders Bering Breivik Manifesto. You have to say why you did it. You have to say how you planned it. You have to say why you chose the particular weapon you have, how many bullets you had in your magazines, how you were going to carry your bullets on those things. Like it's like a, you know, a, you know, a, I can't know. I don't know how to put it. Like, it's like the manifestos are these manuals on mass murder, and you have to be equal to or best the next mass murder.